Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Google Hangout with the uh, head groundsman here at Wimbledon, Neil Sudley. We're delighted that we've got some guests on, on the line, as it were, with us. We've got Chris from thinlyspread.co.uk, Helen from kiddiecharts.com, and Rosie from rosiescribble.co.uk. So it's a slightly damp day here at Wimbledon. We're getting very excited for the championships, which start, starts in just under two weeks' time. So we're going to ask you for your questions. Uh, Rosie, let's go first with you. Hi, Neil. Hi. Um, I'm going to ask quite a broad question that you've probably heard a million times before. Um, what's involved in the preparation of the grounds, and when does that start? Is it an all-year-round thing, or is it something that starts, say, two months before Wimbledon tournament starts? It pretty much starts as soon as the last one finishes. So as soon as the, uh, the, the final ball is struck on centre court, pretty much the following day, we will then start looking at what needs to be done around the grounds uh, and, and what preparation needs to be done for the following year. All of the courts will then start over that period from the championships through to September, uh, start to be renovated, ready for, uh, to get them ready for the winter break. And then once we get through winter back into spring, it, it's straight back on them again and then getting the pre-championship uh, prep work done. And do they get very damaged during the tournaments? Well, I suppose that depends on the weather. Yeah, or we tend it? to find the, 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 the hotter and drier the tournament, you tend to get a little bit more wear, um, just because the grass stresses out a little bit more. So in an ideal world, if we could have a, a nice 25 degree uh, sunny-ish day every day of the tournament, I would be a very happy man. And uh, one final question, are you a tennis fan? Um, I think so. I think you get to the point where there's so much tennis going on that you get to the point where you just kind of get used to walking past Roger and Rafa and, and, and watching them knocking up um, and practice and stuff. But yeah, I mean, the one good thing here at the Grand Slams is that you're always getting the pinnacle of all the players, so it's actually nice to be able to see all of those players and then and, and just bringing their skill to, to, to all of them. Thank you very much. Helen, let's go to you next. Okay, okay, thanks very much. Um, hello there, Neil, how are you doing? Hi. Very well, thank you. Good. Um, I noticed you, you used first name terms with Roger and Rafa. Very nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, who, who is the um, nicest player that you've met? Because, um, you know, you see them obviously playing, but you don't really know what they're actually like. Well, I think you tend to see the character of the player normally the week before the championship starts when it's um, uh, practice week because they're a lot more relaxed there's no media around and they are a little bit more jovial with each other and, and you can pretty much pick up that most of the players get on really well with each other um, so as staff I don't particularly really have much sort of um, to do with them per se I, I normally will ask the question how the course today how was you know how was practice and how you know any sort of feedback that they can give me on the courts um, yeah. but yeah no generally they are uh, any questions that you ask them like they would you know more than happily uh, answer it, you tend to you tend to find once the tournament starts um, they then get their kind of come into game mode and they, they come a lot more serious but normally the week before um, on the whole, they're, they're really nice and they're, and they're all very pleasant. I, I don't think I've really met a tennis player that's, that's been very sort of offish and, and wouldn't answer a question or anything like that. So on the whole, they're, yeah, they're a good bunch of people. Fantastic. And, and kind of, I suppose that, that moves on a little bit to the next question is really that, that aside from, you know, having quite a lot of contact with the players, which all of us tennis fans would probably think was fantastic, what do you feel is the best and then what's the worst thing about what you do in, in your job? I think the best thing is is, is being courtside whenever we want and, and just seeing the grounds go from winter to spring and, and watch it all evolve, watch all the media then start to turn up, all the marquees get built for the uh, court hospitality, all the all the scoreboards and, and all the IT infrastructure that, that goes on here, that all gets put in as well. So you can gradually over the months through April, May and June, see site transform into this, this um, like huge arena. And, uh, and to, you know, just to be a small club and be part of that, it's, uh, it's really exciting. Okay, and about the, wor Chris, the worst thing? Oh, sorry. Oh, the, sorry. Worst, the worst thing? I think Helen had the second part. Uh, 
um, you know that, but it, it's part and parcel of, of Wimbledon, and, and it's something that you just have to get on with and deal with. And you know, no, because we're an outdoor outdoor tournament, no two years are the same. So you'll never get exactly the same temperatures or exactly the same rain. It, it always be different. So you know, every single year there's a new challenge, and you know, probably for us. You know, if, if there's a lot of rain at, at the start of the tournament, you then tend to find that if you, you know you don't want to get behind on any of the matches. So that's probably I'd say more frustrating than, than annoying. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Hello. Um, I've got a question for my seven-year-old first of all, because he's a he's a tennis player himself, and he wants to know how you keep your grass so smooth when ours in the garden is so bumpy. And when he practices with me, it bounces up all over the place. And because with players playing on all the time, does it get rucked up? Do you have to sort of smooth it down again at night? He's very curious about the whole flattening process. Well, pretty much. We're, we're quite a level surface because we've got quite a high clay content. So once we've rolled the courts in the spring, they go down very flat and very hard. So by the time the players actually come out on the, on the playing surface, um, it, it's very difficult for them to actually do too much damage. The only real damage they will do will be the the wearing of the grass. Um, and unfortunately, we, we haven't sort of invented a grass yet that doesn't wear out. So um, so the only real problems we get is just the wear behind the baselines. But the actual body of the court, you know, normally stays in a, in pretty good shape. But um, I'm fortunate enough that I have 16 full-time staff that look after my grass. So. Um, so I, I would suggest if you get a few more staff on your in, in your garden, it'll probably be a lot better. Well, the seventeen-year-old is in charge of the mowing now, so I'm getting there. My, my second question actually would be about the, how things have changed since the the roof was put on, because um, I read somewhere that you have problems with condensation. Has it has it sort of created its own problems as well as solving problems? Certainly, in most sports, um, if you have a, a slippery surface like in football. Um, it's not really a problem. If anything, it probably aids in their sport. Unfortunately for tennis, it has to be very dry. So if you have a roof that closes and you have 15,000 wet people, that, that moisture has to go somewhere. So I think one of, the, one of the biggest challenges I think we had at the club was how do we keep the playing surface dry? Um, I actually think that the addition of the roof plays into the hands of the grass because once the roof's on, You've got a very structured uh, temperature and humidity in, inside the bowl itself. So the actual grass actually survives better with the roof on than it does if it's actually open to the elements in the sun. So um, not that we want the roof on too much, obviously, but because uh, that gives us late nights. But um, once or twice during the tournament, we're, we're happy with. Speaking of late nights, do you have to rush out afterwards after they've all gone and and, re and sort it all out and and make sure the lines are still pristine and everything? Yeah, we have a pretty strict routine here. So once play's finished, we tend to just walk all the courts, um, do any brushing to make sure that they're all clean. Uh, a little bit of water overnight just to make sure that um, we keep the grass really hydrated, and then we'll put the covers on, we'll inflate them, then we all go home to bed, and then. It almost feels like about an hour later we're all back at work again, although it's, it's slightly longer than that. <laughs> and, um, and then all the covers come off first thing in the morning. The guys, they all go out and they've got their um, designated job, so a big group of them will go out mowing the courts. They'll be then followed up with the marking, so every day we're cutting and marking the court, so we know that there's pristine lines every day and the, and the grass is exactly eight millimetres every day before playing. Eight millimetres exactly. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to train the 17-year-old then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you get the seven-year-old out measuring it. <laughs> get the ruler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have, well, actually, do you know what? We Thank have a, a, an independent team that come and measure all our courts for us. So they will actually measure the height, how hard the courts are, and they'll actually do that every day of the championships and do a, a, a report for us to make sure that you know, what we're doing... Wow. Is, Best that we can actually oh, do. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So. And something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got some questions from some of our Twitter fans, which I might just ask Neil. You might be interested to hear the uh, the answers to. Uh, Robin Gordon at Robin Fleet LM has asked Neil, "Can you tell who's played just from the damage to the court?" Um. 
Sometimes you can. There are certain players that I won't name that have a certain <laughs> style when, if they serve um, or when they take off when they're serving. They have a certain pattern to the, to the court and you can always tell which courts they've been playing on. Um, but generally, because a lot of the players will mix it up and it'll be ladies, doubles, singles, it's, it's very hard to really uh, pinpoint whether there's any real great trends between certain players, but that some of them that play on the show courts and more often play on the show courts, you can actually sometimes tell um, who's been playing where. We've got another one. This one is prefaced with the line, here's a really stupid question, so be prepared. It's from Lorato Maffetti, at Lo Maffetti. He says, has anyone ever spilt strawberries and cream on the grass? Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Um, I don't think they're allowed that close before they, uh, before they get stopped, but I'd like to think they eat them, so. And then uh, and, uh, someone, uh, Neil Kirby, at Earl Kirby, asks how you deal with spring frosts. Uh, we're pretty much open to the elements, so if we get snow in the winter, we'll just let it sit on the on the courts because we're not using them. Um, if, if we get frost, we just you know we don't go on the courts. We just wait until the frosts come out, and then and then we go on the courts and start working on them. And then last one from our Twitter fans, and then I'll, I'll uh, throw it back open to you guys. Uh, Debbie at Debbie Mag says, "Do the players do anything to the grass, especially that make you rage with anger?" Not really. I mean, ultimately, our job is to prepare the courts ready for the players. So, you know, and part and parcel of that is that the players will wear it out. So, if they didn't wear it out, I'd be out of the job. So, to a, to an extent, I almost want the players to, to to cause some. I wouldn't say damage, but some wear to the courts. And then, you know, each year, if we can just make it so it's slightly better each year, so we can benchmark that we're actually doing a good job, then then I'll be happy with that. Great. Anyone got any more questions for Neil? I've got one. How, how you, you, no, you go, Chris. <laughs> how do you control the weeds? Because I've got terrible dandelion problems. Well, for us, we're quite fortunate because we're such highly managed and the grass is always kept very short. A weed naturally doesn't like being cut that short, so we tend to find that weeds right. don't actually um, appear on our course because it's so short. You'll find in your garden, because your grass is probably an inch or two inches long, um, that's like the perfect height for, for weeds to infest. So how often do you cut the grass? Is it like first thing morning, first thing in the evening? When, when do you um, sort of, you know, before and after play? How does it work? Not, uh, during the championships, well, during the championships it's cut every morning. So, um, and the way that our covers are designed is that they, they're inflatable. So if we come into work in the morning and it's raining, we can actually still get underneath and cut and mark out all the courts um, while it's raining. And then once it stops raining, we can then deflate the covers and then as soon as the covers are off, the players can then get on court and, and, and play. So um, so that's pretty much how we go. Anyone else? Can I just make one final point? Um, yeah. I think we take it for granted that the courts will look immaculate. So do you feel appreciated enough? Do enough people thank you for obviously all the hard work you're putting in all year round? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time we get, you know, a lot of positive feedback, but we tend to find that if the players don't say anything, that normally means that they're happy. Mm. You normally um, only ever get any feedback if it's a negative feedback. So the fact that nobody actually mentions it means that we're probably doing a, a good job, or hopefully we're doing a good job. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. I think we'll uh, call it a day there. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening and for your input. And uh, we hope to bring you another Hangout soon. Uh, in the meantime, go and have a look at youtube.com slash Wimbledon. Uh, we're going to have more and more videos of the preparations of the championships and other little bits behind the scenes. So have a look. Let us know what you think. Uh, and thanks for your time. Bye. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Bye. Bye.